Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you are doing well. So today we will continue with the story of Prophet Noel as salam. And as I mentioned in the last class, what we will now be doing is we will go over some ayat from the Quran related to Prophet Noel as salam. And specifically in this lesson, we will cover ayat 59 through 64 from Surah Araf. And as usual, we'll start with our learning objectives. One of our objectives is to talk about how idol worshipping began in the world. Then we also want to understand what is the reality of shirk. And then we'll talk about the difference between a prophet and a messenger. We discussed this briefly before and here we will discuss it again. The difference between a prophet which is a Nabi and a messenger. And in Arabic a messenger is called a Rasul. Okay. Now, some points that are important. These stories of prophets consoled the Holy Prophet وسلم, that it was not just his nation that refused to believe in the truth. Rather, the previous nations had disregarded it as well and that those who reject the prophets will face destruction in this world and a greater torment in the hereafter. These stories contain an amazing proof of the prophethood of the Holy Prophet وسلم, despite being an Ummi or someone who is unlettered, he explained these events in detail. This is a clear proof that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is the true prophet and the Lord of the worlds opened the doors of prophetic knowledge to him. So there are several points that are made here. One point is that through these stories, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoled the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the beginning of these classes, so you might recall we talked about the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his life in Makkah, his life in Medina, and you might recall that life was very difficult for him. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would call people to Islam and they would reject the message. And that was very difficult for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But through these stories, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling him and telling him that it's not just the people in your time, even in the past, whenever the prophets presented a message, the message was rejected. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he should not feel bad about it. His job is to deliver the message. Now, just like there is a message in these stories, for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Similarly, there are many lessons and messages in these stories for us and we will talk about that. The other point made is that these stories contain a proof of the prophethood of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are saying that he was an Ummi, unlettered. Now, what does this mean? In the context of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this means that he did not get any formal education. Nobody ever saw him going to a teacher and learning how to read and write. So in that sense, he was what is called in Arabic an Ummi, someone unlettered. But the reality is that the Prophet Wasallam was extremely learned and he got his knowledge from none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah was the teacher of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could talk in so much detail about the stories of the older prophets, the prophets who came before him. And many of these stories are in the Quran. And then there is more detail about these stories in the Hadith where the Prophet told the Sahaba about many events that happened in the lives of these prophets. So that showed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the knowledge and this knowledge came to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, now let us go over the surah together. And as I mentioned, the ayat we are covering are from surah al-Araf, which is surah number seven. And we will go and we will start with ayat number 59. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Laqad arsalna Nuhan ila qawmihi faqala ya qawmi budullaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayru 
انی اخاف علیکم عذاب یوم عظیم سو آئی ہوپ یو ریسائٹیڈ آفٹر می ناؤ لیٹس جسٹ گو اوور دا میننگ لقد ارسل نا نوحن الى قومه انڈیڈ وی سینٹ نو علیہ السلام ٹو ہز پیپل فقال سو ہی سیڈ یا قومی عبود اللہ او مائی پیپل ورشپ اللہ ما لکم من الہ غیر یو ہیو نو گاڈ ایکسیپٹ ہم انی اخاف علیکم انڈیڈ آئی فیئر فار یو عذاب یوم عظیم دا پنشمنٹ آف دا گریٹ ڈے آف ججمنٹ سو آئی جسٹ ریڈ دس انٹائر پارٹ ٹوگیدر ناؤ Indeed, we sent Nuh alayhi salam to his people. So he said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no God except him. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of the great day of judgment. Now I'll read the next three ayat, 60, 61 and 62. And as before, I will read it slowly. So you read after me and then I'll go over the meaning. قال الملأ من قومه انک فی دلال مبین قال یا قومی لئی سب دلال تم ولا کنی رسول رب العالمین ابل کم رسالاتی ربی و انسح لکم و آلم من اللہ مالا تعلم ناؤ دا میننگ قال الملا او من قومی ہی دا چیفس آف ہز پیپل سیڈ ان نا لن راک انڈیڈ وی سی یو فی دلال مبین ان کلیئر ایر قال یا قومی نو علیہ السلام سیڈ او مائی پیپل لئی سب دلال او مائی پیپل دیر از نو ایر ان می و لا کنی رسول رب العالمین بٹ آئی ایم اے میسنجر فرام دا لارڈ آف آل دا ورلڈ ابل حکم آئی کنوے ٹو یو رسالات ربی دا میسنجر دا میسجز آف مائی لارڈ و انسح لکم And I advise you sincerely, وَأَعْلَمُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ And I know from Allah, مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That you do not know. Now I'll just read the meaning through. The chiefs of his people said, Indeed, we see you in clear error. Nuh alayhi salam said, O my people, there is no error in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of all the worlds. I convey to you the messages of my Lord and I advise you sincerely and I know from Allah that you do not know. Now ayat 63 and 64. Awa ajib tum anja'akum zikrum mir rabbikum ala rajulim منكم لينذركم ولتتقوا ولعلكم ترحمون فكذبوه فأنجيناه والذين معه في الفلك وأغرقنا الذين كذبوا بآياتنا إنهم كانوا قومن امین اوکے ناؤ دا میننگ اب اجب تم اینڈ ڈو یو ونڈر ان جا کم ذکر دیٹ اے ریمائنڈر کیم ٹو یو مر ربی کم فرام یور لارڈ آلا رجو لم من کم تھرو اے مین فرام امنگ یو لی یون زیرا کم دیٹ ہی مے وون یو ولی تت تقو اینڈ دیٹ یو may fear to disobey Allah wala allakum turhamun and that there be mercy upon you fakazzabuhu but they denied him fa anjaynahu so we saved him 
وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And those with him فِي الْفُلْكِ In the ark وَأَغْرَقْنَا الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And we drowned those who denied our signs إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا عَمِينَ Indeed, they were a blind people. So now I'll read the meaning of 63 and 64 together. And do you wonder that a reminder came to you from your Lord through a man from among you that he may warn you and that you may fear to disobey Allah and that there be mercy upon you? But they denied him, so we saved him and those with him in the ark and we drowned those who denied our signs Indeed, they were a blind people. Okay, so now let's go over these ayat in more detail, starting with ayat number 59. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اِبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ إِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, we sent Nuh to his people. So he said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no God except him. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of the great day. So what was the invitation of Prophet Nuh to his people? His invitation was very simple. He invited his nation to worship Allah alone and not to worship idols, not to worship anyone else. His invitation was to worship Allah alone. In other words, to do Tawheed, to stay on Tawheed and not to do Shirk. Okay, now an important term used in this ayat is ibadat, which is loosely translated as worship. In the context of Sharia, worship means to realize your weakness in front of the deity, i.e. in front of Allah, affirm utmost respect for him and humble oneself before him. Then this other term that we've talked about is ilah. The literal meaning of ilah is God or deity, the one who is loved, the one who is acknowledged as the sovereign and the one who is worshipped. Its connotative meaning is the one who is acknowledged as sovereign or deity and thus worshipped. This word connotative is slightly difficult, so it basically means that um, the meaning that is implied uh, from this. So the connotative meaning or the meaning that comes out of this is one who is acknowledged as sovereign or deity and is therefore worshipped. Okay, another term that comes here is punishment of the great day. So we've talked about punishment of the great day in the translation. It is the day on which the nation would receive punishment in this world due to its disobedience and ungratefulness. So the prophets would warn their people and if the people disobeyed the prophet, they would come a day even in this world where they would be punished for the disobedience. Okay, and then next ayat, ayat number 60. قَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ إِنَّا لَنَرَاكَ فِي دَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ The chiefs of his people said, Indeed, we see you in clear error. So, Prophet Nuh invited the people to Tawheed, to worship Allah alone and he would take this message not only to the poor people but also to the chiefs or the important people in his community, in his nation. And what is the response he got? The response from the leaders of the community was that you are in clear error. Allah. So this is what the leaders would say to Prophet Nuh They would say that Prophet Nuh is in error. They implied that leading their nation away from the polytheistic ways of their misguided ancestors and inviting them to worship one God was Prophet Nuh's misguidance. Allah. So what the leaders wanted was to stick to their old ways, stick to what they had seen their forefathers do. And when Prophet Nuh was inviting them towards the worship of just one God, then they would say to Prophet Nuh that you are the one who is misguided. Then next ayat number 61. لَيْسَ بِدَلَالَةٌ so Prophet Nuh said, O oh my people, there is no error in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of all the worlds. 
So Prophet Nuh alayhi salam is debating with him. So he is saying to the leaders, I am not the one in error, you are the one in error. In fact, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam is saying that I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds and I am simply bringing that message to you. So basically this is Prophet Nuh's answer to the nation's accusation. So the leaders were accusing Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and Prophet Nuh alayhi salam rejected the accusation and told them that he was a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now coming to this term Rasul or messenger. Messengers are people chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deliver his message to everyone. And as we said, we'll talk about the difference between a Rasul and a Nabi. So a messenger or a Rasul is a Nabi, but every Nabi is not a messenger. So I'm, st I'm sure you study maths and in maths you study sets. So what you can think of is that Nabi is this big set. So Allah sent many, many Anbiya, which is the plural of Nabi. And some of those Anbiya were Rasuls. So Rasul is in a sense a subset. So it is contained within the larger group of Anbiya. Therefore, all Rasuls would also be Nabis. But every single Nabi is not necessarily a Rasul. So basically messengers or Rasul usually are those special people who are given a book or a Sharia. So a Sharia is a set of commands from Allah. And we said before also that another possibility might be that a Rasul is someone who is sent to a particular nation. So for example, our Prophet وسلم, is a Rasul. Hazrat Isa salam was a Rasul, Hazrat Musa was a Rasul. So they all were given a book and they were sent by Allah on a very special mission. Okay, then ayat number 62. Uballigukum risalati rabbi wa ansahu lakum wa a'alamu min allahi ma la ta'alamun. I convey to you the messages of my Lord and I advise you sincerely and I know from Allah that you do not know. So what was Allah's purpose of sending messengers? They were sent to deliver Allah's message to his servants. And what is the meaning of Allah's message? It is basically the invitation to believe in Allah and to do good deeds. Now a practical aspect here, in addition to rectifying ourselves, we should also try and invite our family and friends towards Allah's message with well-wishing in the form of sincere advice. So we should call our friends and family to Allah's message in a very nice way, in a loving way. We must assure them that their well-being, that is their success in both worlds lies in the obedience of Allah. So if we are obedient to Allah, we will be successful and happy in this world and in the next. If we disobey Allah, we will have problems in this world and we will also have a much bigger problem in the next life. Okay, then ayat number 63. And do you wonder that a reminder came to you from your Lord through a man from among you that he may warn you and that you may fear to disobey Allah and that there be mercy upon you. So why was the nation surprised that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his revelation to Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? The nation said that he was a man just like them. They thought that an angel should have been sent to them as a prophet. So the people that Prophet Noah was preaching to, especially the, the leaders, they found it very strange that somebody like them who had grown up with them, who eats with them, who does all the things that normal human beings do, that this person is coming and telling them that he receives this revelation from Allah, from God. So they found that very hard to believe. So clearly there is wisdom behind choosing prophets from among humankind. They can be an example for the people and it is easy for the people to obey them as they speak the same language which their people understand. Their 
character thus becomes a complete role model for humankind and it also serves as a firm proof and evidence from Allah. So the point is that it's possible to follow a human being. If Allah had sent an angel, then the people would say, okay, the angels can do all this. We are not angels, therefore we can't do this. So when the prophets were being sent, at that point, people questioned them by saying, you are just a human being like us. Why should we follow you? Today, the challenge is different. Today, some of us don't follow the prophets because we say they were special, they were prophets. So they could do what they did, but we are just ordinary people. We can't follow them. So the challenge in our time is different. So now we say they were so special, so we can't follow them. At that time, people had an objection that why are these normal people, people that we should follow? We wanted some angel to come down. So the point here is that those who don't want to be obedient will always find some excuse. But we need to recognize that we have to follow what Allah says and the messengers are role models for us, especially our own messenger Prophet Muhammad and we need to look at what they did and try to live our lives by their example. So what's the purpose of sending messengers? They were sent to acquaint people with their fate. It means here to warn them that they would be punished if they disobey Allah. So the point's very straightforward that the messengers would tell people what to do. The fact that we need to believe in just one God, one Allah. And if we believe and do good deeds, then we will have a good life. But if we do not believe and we don't do good deeds, then we will be punished. We will have problems in this world and the next. An important term that keeps coming up is taqwa. So this means fearing Allah's displeasure and staying away from disobedience. So we've talked about this before. If we have somebody that we love very much, we are afraid of doing anything that would displease that person. So if you love your parents very much, you are not just afraid of them. What you are afraid of is doing something that will displease them. And that's how we can think of taqwa. So taqwa means being afraid of displeasing Allah. Okay, now ayat number 64. But they denied him. So we saved him and those with him in the ark. And we drowned those who denied our signs. Indeed, they were a blind people. So what was the nation's response to Prophet Nuh's call? The response was that they denied Prophet Nuh Now here we need to understand that there are different types of denial. One type of denial is rejection through the tongue. That is rejecting the tenets of Islam like Tawheed, Prophethood, pillars of Islam and so on with the tongue. For example, somebody might verbally reject that prayer is obligatory. So this is a verbal denial and this is very problematic. This clearly puts somebody on the wrong side. So many people, however, reject through actions. So that's the other kind of denial. So rejection. So the other kind is rejection through actions. That is believing in the tenets of Islam, but not acting upon them of, or saying that one believes in them, but not acting based on them. For example, accepting that prayer is obligatory, but still not performing it. Rejection with the tongue is disbelief, whereas rejection through actions is disobedience and sin. Hence, we must stay away from all types of denial. So we should stay away from denial through our tongue and we should also stay away from denial through our actions. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with the believers and Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? So Allah saved them from the punishment. And what about the consequence of those who rejected Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? They were destroyed in the flood because of their shirk. And we'll see this in more detail later, but the consequence of those who rejected was pretty bad. There was a huge flood as we talked about in our last lesson. And in that flood, all those who rejected Prophet Noah were destroyed. And in fact, 
in this ayat number 64 prophet knows nation the people that rejected him they've been called blind so why is that this is because they were not willing to follow the straight path it is as if they did not want to see it so here blind means spiritually blind because obviously they could see with their eyes they could see that prophet Noah is constructing this big ship but they refuse to see the truth they refuse to see the fact that prophet Noah is a messenger of god messenger of allah who is telling them to do good things telling them to believe and the nation just refused to accept that they refused to see the fact that he is the messenger of allah so in that sense they are being called blind so that is it for this particular lesson this gave you an overview and we understood the basic message we've also understood some key points that there are lots of lessons in these stories for us there was a lesson in this for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was also a consolation for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this shows us that the core message of tawhid is a message that was preached by all prophets so prophet adam alaihi salam had this message and now we are talking about prophet Noah alaihi salam and he had the same message so that is it i will see you next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh